Some time ago I made a video where I built buildings from all the 12 countries in South America and today I want to do the same for Europe. How many countries could that be? Oh, that's a lot. But don't worry, for many of them I've already built something so I'm stuck with only those 24. Welcome back to my survival world where I'm building the tallest Minecraft base. And we're starting right off with the Vilnius Stock Exchange from Lithu Lithuania followed by the Monte Titano Castle in San Marino. From Andorra I couldn't find a building so I built this statue based on this painting made by this guy. For a surrealist painting it was actually surprisingly easy to build. Here you can see a comparison. I only had to kill some piglins for the gold. Next, the Skanderbeg Museum in Albania. An Art Nouveau house in Riga in Latvia. The large obelisk in Vatican City. Followed by an Emirate Arch and the Farley building in Estonia. Above that I built the Wave Apartment building from Denmark. That is actually one of the larger builds in this video. I did a lot of small builds to get all the countries in. And then on the side I built the Our Lady of the Rocks Church in Montenegro. From Luxembourg I built the main tower of the Luxembourg train station. And next to it I placed the entrance of the Monte Carlo Casino in Monaco. The difficult part here was get the right tone. I don't think it fits perfectly because it, is, it isn't as yellow as this but it isn't as white as concrete so it was a little bit hard finding the right block. Next building from Ireland is Bunrati Castle. From Bulgaria I built a Lamartine house from Ploftiv and from the United Kingdom I built one of the iconic double-decker buses. For Romania I have the main tower in Corwin Castle and for Croatia I built the Sponsa Palace. For Belgium I want to build something larger, the Antwerp City Hall. The building consists of several stages and I think it's a really interesting build because every single stage has a little bit special going for it. We start with the masonry base followed by these stone arches with the flags of different countries. Then there are these coats of arms with more arches and then it goes a little bit step back to the top. Okay, from Iceland I have the church in Reykjavik. And from Bosnia and Herzegovina I have the Jesus Half Cathedral. Moldova is only famous for its wine, so I built a winery and you just have to trust me that it's a Moldovan winery. If you can do that. For Belarus I have one of the towers of Mir Castle and next to it I place Gutenberg Castle in Liechtenstein. The Swallow Castle from the Ukraine and the Cesare Open Air Museum houses from Finland. Now that the exterior is done I can continue on the interior. We have a lot of space and the first thing I want to do is add a ceiling here so that the lake doesn't freeze over again. The ceiling is a simple black ceiling with some lights. I also started decorating the area with some lily pads and I tried to get some llamas into the building. These are trailer llamas, you can actually tame them like every other llama then they no longer despawn. And one of them I got through the portal, the other one apparently did not want to, so I sadly had to leave it behind in the nether. The other llama then got a free tour through my base, all the way from the storage area through the museum and the aquarium to the newly built area. I also added some turtle eggs. Then I completed the wall on the arch and added additional structures for the elevators. In the center I placed a alien tree with various androids and different colored glass panes to make it pop more. And that's basically the interior. Then a comment requested me to build the Elias sculpture by Ingvar Kronhammer in Denmark. And I think Tom Scott made a video about this sculpture. He called it the most frustrating artwork in the world. And maybe he's right because the special thing about that artwork is that 
you can't really see it in action. The, the general idea is that it is uh, basically a machine that produces a big flame, but it produces that flame at random roughly once a month. And you don't know when it will happen, it only records it after it has happened, so you can't actually see the flame in action unless you are really really lucky. And I mimic this with these random generators, so every 5 seconds there is a 1 in roughly 6500 chance for it to go off. That would look something like this, where it shoots, I think it should shoot 3 fireballs, but we will never actually see it, just like the artist intended. At that point I noticed that we have already reached 750 blocks in height, so the exterior is 3 quarters done. But on the interior I have only reached 700 blocks of height, so that's where I will continue. And I thought since I have already built a beautiful garden here, why shouldn't I build a second garden? I start with the general outlines of the garden, which are made from sand on one side and from dirt on the other side. River. Then I add a river in the center and once that is done I add a small bridge so that I can cross from one side of the river to the other. The bubble elevators on the eastern corner I cover up with a waterfall and in the next step I make the river a little bit prettier with various kinds of stones at the side. The sand area I then turn into some kind of zen garden with small pebbles uh, in form of buttons and on the other side I make a more classical garden with various hedges and plants. I also added those acacia decorations. On the zen garden I then add this small stone shrine. In the center is this stone circle made from the stone stairs and the, and the side stairs. I also decorated it a little bit. Now that this is done I still have to do the walls and cover up all the buildings on the outside. This is essentially my equivalent of building the back of my buildings. And lastly I have to build the ceiling from different blue blocks. And now I want to show it to you with shaders. Here we have the base loaded in. And let's land right here inside the lower garden with the duck. I think it worked out great. Especially the tree in the center with the end rods and the glass panes that... Oh, there's still a block here that should be removed. Okay, where was I exactly? Lower garden looks great with the water directly below is the aquarium with the fish. And above is the black ceiling, somewhat similar to a night sky with the sea lanterns. We also have llama and well this gigantic arch that lets in a lot of light. Now we follow the lily pad path and can continue to the second garden I built, the Japanese garden. There's still some shulker boxes I have to remove. I later have to sort it in as well. That could take a little bit of time. I have always large amounts of shulker boxes left at the end of the episode. But the important thing is the garden turned out great. Again, in the, I think it's the, I think that is the western wall of the order that's facing the west. Here we have a lot of light coming in through the through the windows of the wave apartment building, that's what the structure is called, which I built on the outside. We have the shrine here with the hole in the middle, and in the ceiling we have a day sky also with these lanterns, because otherwise it would simply be too dark. A lovely little waterfall and some decorations. I think that turned out quite fine. Well, that's the next area. Now with natural lighting, natural lighting with shaders is absolutely amazing in Minecraft, but um, the nature of that building, that tower, is basically that the vast majority of my rooms are without, or with only limited natural lighting. There's, there won't be any lighting for above. There won't be any lighting from above because there will always be another story on top. So I have to make do with lighting in there 
with the light I can get from windows and lamps. Okay, I think that's all for today. I have to go back into the storage room, sort stuff in. Oh, by the way, I've updated the map in the center so that the progress in the tower is now visible here. For today, this is all. Have a beautiful time and goodbye.